Ooh, what's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 114 of the Stand Up Guys podcast. I'm your host, the incomparable Zach Jones, joined as always by the Mike Murdoch to my Matt Murdoch, Lester Jones. Hello, everybody. And of course, it wouldn't be our show if we didn't have the ninth wonder, Chocolate Thunder. He respects the power of the majestic ham flower. He knows the appeal of the rusty wagon wheel, the Baron of Brown Town, the Duke of Dukeville, the Ayatollah of Asahola, the phenomenal A.J. Singh. Yay! Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, well, we will be bringing you our review of the penultimate episode of She-Hulk, which, of course, co-stars, spoiler alert, Daredevil. Um, but guys, what else you been doing this week? What you been watching? Anything good? And, uh, so I am still watching Craziest Girlfriend. <laughs> it's on uh, season four. And, uh, I can tell that one of their writers died by this point because, uh, they've completely changed their whole entire, like, format. Like, the show is completely different. Everything's just sad now. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's weird. Like, cause normally, like, you would, the show is, like, quick and funny and has a lot of puns and stuff like that. But now it's more like, you know, slapstick and like, you know, the, the writing has gone down a little bit, but it's still fun and enjoyable. I, I'll still follow, you know, follow through with it. And uh, I did watch a little bit of um, Werewolf by Night, but not all of it yet because uh, I just watched Oh, it. right. Yeah, I haven't watched that yet. I watched like half of it. It looks pretty good. I like it. It's interesting. It's not super long, right? It's only supposed to be like, like half an hour. hour. Oh, an hour? Okay. It's like 54 minutes. Oh, okay, okay. There's probably like a lot of you know credits and stuff too in there. I don't know. And what about you there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really, really moving along the conversation. <laughs> really bringing a lot to this show. <laughs> That's what I usually do. I'm expecting to watch Hocus Pocus 2 tonight. The kids are going to watch uh, one right, right, right now while I'm here, and then uh, we'll watch two when I get back there. Did you see that tweet I tweeted you though? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's something I'll take into consideration while watching Hocus Pocus. <laughs> There's like some news clip where they interviewed this, you know, right wing religious yeah. lady. And she's like, oh, the demons, are, I believe they come through the TV and they can and all this bullshit. And like, she's, she won't subject her, her kids to that sort of thing. You know? Yeah, we know how scary and dangerous Hocus Pocus is. Witches. Teaching the kids <laughs> the witchcraft again. <laughs> They they opened uh, Bette Midler's coffin and like their face <laughs> melted like the Indiana Jones. <laughs> the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> You've really been going hard after Bette Midler. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody didn't like Hocus Pocus 1. <laughs> I thought it was all right. I thought Sarah Jessica Parker looked the best ever in that movie. Like uh, I've never seen her look better than that. She looked really good in there. What about uh, what's the other one? The Cat, navigator, Kathy and the Jimmy. Oh, well, she lost a bunch of weight. <laughs> She's like thin now. Now you might. You did might. did you do you like her thinner or thicker? <laughs> she was funnier, thicker. <laughs> thin people aren't funny, man. They're just uh, I don't know. Will Sasso taught me that lesson. <laughs> Is he still fat or did he get thin? <laughs> uh, he's still fat, man. Uh... You're like, I was laughing at him all along. <laughs> now he's too thin. Yeah. When he was hunting Dipper Dan, he was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't watched a ton this week. I, uh, I came across this show on uh, Hulu that's set in like the late 90s, early 2000s. And they even, like, shoot it on old cameras in the old, like, TV aspect ratio. Are you talking about that David Spade show? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> that is what I was going to say. They even de-aged David Spade, and it's called Just Shoot Me. <laughs> oh. I heard you watching that. Well, like, I couldn't find anything I really wanted to watch. And, like, I saw that on there, and I was like... Whenever I get, like, nostalgic, it's usually for, like, a sitcom of, like, that era, you know? And so I was like, okay, I'll give this a spin. And so I, it's just kind of been my, on my you know, on in the background show this week. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's, it's fun. Like, it's not, like, the best, like, 90s sitcom, but it's got some solid laughs. And, and it's probably a lot funnier than any 
comedy, you know, going today. Yeah, I watched a ton of that. I think it came on like over and over again, like in the early two thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched it a lot back yeah. back in the day. So it, it's some of the jokes are like they go for are pretty silly and cartoonish, but like some of them are solid. So I don't know. It's it's a fun show. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I watched the latest episode of Andor. Like, once again, like, I really liked it, but, like, I think kids would find this show boring as fuck. Because, <laughs> like, it, especially, like, this episode, like, they're, it's, like, one of those things where they're gearing up for a heist, which I think is probably going to take place next episode. But this episode was just, like, all set up, you know? Mm. And, like, mo- like, mostly dialogue, you know? There's not a, not a lot of action, but it's still, like, really good, you know? But, yeah, I... C- I don't think kids would like this show at all. Um, but yeah, really, besides She-Hulk, that's all I pretty much watched uh, uh, this week. Uh, do you guys... Hey, before we get into like our main stories, I was wondering, did you guys like see this headline about Biden like basically kind of pardoning, um, you know, federal criminals that are like non-violent? marijuana it's like marijuana possession yeah yeah that's long overdue yeah it is and uh i hate when i agree when the government does something and i agree <laughs> with it but it happens once in a while you know for being like a, a corporate democrat like biden's at least done a few things recently like he, you know he forgave some of the student loans i don't know how many but and then you know this which to I don't know, like, the exact details of this is too soon, like, so I don't know if there's, like, you know, the headline sounds better than what it actually is, you know, type of thing. But, you know, hopefully it is that, like, there's no reason for nonviolent, like, marijuana, like, you know, possession people to be in prison, like, yeah, let them all, but I think he can only do it on the federal level, like, on the state level, it would be up to all the states individually, but, like, Mm -hmm. hopefully, like, it, it sets a precedent and... He's building up in case his son gets arrested for smoking crack. He can <laughs> Maybe. do that here in Portland Maybe. just fine. <laughs> but, you know, like, at the end of the day, it's probably more for, like, votes. But I don't care because it's, like, things I agree with. But, like, you got to imagine, like... The timing is uh, conspicuous. Right, right. It, you know, if I was in prison... And, and for a bullshit thing like that, and like he got me out, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'll vote for him. <laughs> I mean, you think your family too, like right, the families too. Yeah. And same with like getting rid of like some of the the student loan debt, like. Yeah, it's just buying loans with other people or buying votes with other people's money. I mean, that's just what popular. is, though. That's all that is. Like that is what it is. Hmm. I mean, Elon Musk got his fortune from us giving him money. Well, not all of it, but he definitely got his share. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think an argu- argument can be made for, for um, you know, having the government pay for um, either school or trade school because, like, that would have to increase the the middle class, right? To have, and it I, never I hurts know, to have more it- educated people, right? I mean. Well, you built up with all these educated people who have degrees that aren't worth shit, too. So, I mean, somebody has to do the, the labor as well. <laughs> we can't all be uh, social justice warriors or, you know, history majors. I mean, yeah, uh, per- are, there's going to be a percentage. Professors. I mean, there is going to be a percentage of those, but there's going to be a, a large percentage that, you know, <laughs> do end up getting work. They're not all going to be useless degrees. I mean, no, I mean if it's journalists. free money, people, colleges are going to get you in on something. Well, you know, even the countries that have like a free college program, I don't, I don't know if it's like infinite. It's probably one of those things where like you get like, you know, your four years or whatever and anything else you got to pay for. I don't, I don't have really no idea. Yeah. No, no, I know LSU has like free college, but I don't know how they do it either. But I, my ex-girlfriend went to LSU for free. Hmm. Yeah. LSU, is that like Louisiana? What is that? Louisiana State University. It's not free for everybody, is it? I think for local, like in-state people. Really? Yeah. Damn, that's... Or her I, friends went for free. She didn't go for free. Her friends went for free. 
Because they were, you know, she was in the sorority with them and they were locals. Oh, so they were like Louisiana residents? Yeah, yeah. She was from Texas. Man, I would like go live in Louisiana for a couple years, become a resident. <laughs> if I, I know. I, I was shocked to hear it was free. I'm like, how does that? I heard a lot. Actually, a lot of colleges were free like before 19, like before the civil rights uh, bill was passed. Like a lot of universities were free. I mean, most state colleges will will be cheaper for residents, but I don't think most of them are free. Right. Yeah. So that, I never really understood that mechanic either. I don't either. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe the states are just like, we'll put this much money forward for residents? I don't know. We're trying to keep our people or something. I don't know. We're trying to maintain our uh, bloodlines or something. (laughs) Oh, yeah, it could be that. Like, Louisiana needs, like, a... They have like a reverse mm-hmm. brain drain situation. They have a brain drain, and they need to reverse it. Like they need to get people into their state who are smart, right? So that would make sense if you had like the people who live there going to school for free. They might be more likely to stay there. Maybe, then, but I'd be like, oh, I'm done with fucking Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm sure a lot of people. Are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the thing is, once you get your degree, you're gonna probably go where you can best Wherever, use it. Yeah. You know. Most people go to the, you know, they split split in the wind, or whatever, whatever the saying is. It's like we got our degrees in Montana, but then there's no jobs in Montana. Right. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know. Um. Well, you guys want to get into story time? Let's do it. All right. Anybody who hasn't watched or listened, we're going to go around the table. Everybody will bring a uh, uh, a wacky news story from around the globe, and we'll see if we can't just make something funny and or entertaining out of it. And as tradition dictates, AJ, we usually start with you. So what do you got for us this week? Uh, let's start with you this time because uh, my story closed on me. <laughs> oh, really putting the pressure <laughs> on me. Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, here it is. Oh, right. okay. Uh, it's that time of the year again for people in a specific part of the in a Pacific part of Australia where the plants affectionately known as cum trees start to blossom. I, I read this headline. I didn't read the article. Yeah, I haven't read it either. I just thought it was funny. Uh, the ornamental pear tree are blooming again in Victoria for spring. The trees are currently wreaking havoc in Melbourne with Aussies taking to social media to complain about the unique stench that the trees blossoms emit. <laughs> Melbourne man Louis Phillips or Louis Phillips uh, to- took to TikTok to uh, document the struggle with the stinky plant. If you're from Melbourne, then you've no then you've got a huge issue at the moment. He said in a now viral clip, "It's these trees that smell like cum, otherwise <laughs> n- known as ornamental pear." I know cum, and this smells like cum. <laughs> this guy's a professional. <laughs> They're ruining our collective day. He added, "I can't even go out for a run without wanting to throw up." <laughs> Hey, come on, people People drink that. <laughs> the poor lad couldn't even smell one of the delicate and pretty white flowers without triggering his gag reflex. Well, we, we know he can't do certain things. Then. <laughs> to be fair, that's, a, that's not an uncommon occurrence when semen is present in the scenarios, or so we hear. Uh, some, bright, some bright spark even put one in my backyard. There needs to be a, a stop, he, he added. In the 16-second video, which has now been viewed more than 2.6 million times, uh, well, Lewis, we have bad news. The sperm-smelling trees will continue to bloom throughout the spring, so get used to the scent of semen in the air. Uh, Lewis isn't the only one who has noticed the pungent scent emitted from the rather pretty pear trees. One person commented, my mom likes to uh, look at them, and now we have eight trees in our backyard. Another person reported a similar issue that has made things rather awkward with relatives. My mother-in-law got us one, of, one for a front yard. I can't get rid of it now, nor can I explain why I don't like it. So, let me see here. This guy said... What's uh, that intoxicating aroma? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give someone a bouquet of yeah. these cum flowers or whatever. Make some, uh, <laughs> make some perfume out of it. Ode to cum. <laughs> Here's uh, some tweets. Those bitches who planted those cum trees in Australia know what they were doing. Uh, just the smell of Melbourne cum trees. And I'm so tired of these cum trees. Do either of you <laughs> like, have an associated smell with cum? <laughs> I mean... I don't... I've heard come like women. They say if you eat certain things, it's different. So yeah, but I've never been like. 
<laughs> smells like cum in here. <laughs> My cum is really ranked today. <laughs> <laughs> this cum smells like shit. And also, <laughs> isn't this guy like, he's like, I don't know, he's like, he's having some kind of like PTSD. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's having gag reflexes and stuff. <laughs> he's having like these flashes of just like 50 guys jerking off on him while he's like passed out or something. He's like remembering uh, his time in the service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's in the Vietnam like yeah. fucking bamboo cage with a bunch of dudes jerking off on him. For some reason, I just see someone like tapping one of these with one of those maple syrup taps. And it just come right out. Here we got some fresh, fresh cum. <laughs> There's like little ants or bugs stuck in there for millions of years. It looks like Amber in the future will be discovering cum insects and stuff. <laughs> It was preserved. Isn't it weird? You would think, though, like as many years as we've been on this planet, we would have heard of cum trees if they were a real thing. I thought I would have heard it by now. Yeah, I've been. I feel like I've been looking for these kinds of things. <laughs> <laughs> Nature's weirdest plants, man. <laughs> it is weird too. Like when you like see a video of like some animal that you didn't know exists, and yeah. it's like really weird or something. You're like, how the fuck did we not know about these? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, our education just taught us about, like, cows and horses. <laughs> if it doesn't live on a farm, we don't know what it is. <laughs> These schools better be start teaching cum trees. <laughs> <laughs> now, if there's cum trees, do you think there's, like, vagina trees? Uh... Those could have some smells to <laughs> Like a, a yeasty vagina tree. <laughs> you don't want to plant those kind of trees too close to one another. <laughs> yeah. The old fishing boat's rolling into the bay. <laughs> you got the, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh. Well, should we move on from this classy story and see what's in manifesto round one today? Yeah. All right. Uh, you know the uh, the gun buybacks they do? Oh, right. right. So this one's in New York. And uh, so this guy hears that this uh, gun buyback's coming. So he 3D prints a bunch of guns. And he takes them down there. And it sells them to him for $21,000. Holy shit. And apparently there was some negotiation about how much he should be paid for these. But yeah, it was like a hundred some pieces. I don't even it didn't even sound like it was fully like functioning guns. It was like lower receivers and stuff like this. So they didn't have any rules about like, you know, the guns have to have like serial numbers or he just shows up with a bunch of three D printed guns. I've heard of other ones where like people brought in like, you know, pipe guns where basically you just have a pipe a potato and then gun. You, you put a freaking <laughs> like shotgun shell in it and just like hit it or something. <laughs> I don't know. This was very primitive. And also, like, how much were they giving? The, like, how many guns did this guy make? I think it said it was in the 100 range. It does say. I mean, um, how could they not catch on that he was just printing them for, for the I money? Mean, I mean, it's obvious. 110 Parts to 110. Uh, yeah, that's insane. They would have had to have known that this guy was scamming them. Yeah, absolutely. But it's still a working, uh, possibly functioning piece of a gun. <laughs> I guess. I, I, I mean, anytime you have, like, a system like this, there's going to be somebody who games you. Yeah. And, like, I don't know. It's just inc- insane. But 21 grand, I mean, not a bad day. Yeah, I would do that. For a bunch of plastic, basically. Yeah. Time to start printing some guns, boys. Uh, you probably got to know somebody on the inside of the, you know, like, who will actually take those guns and give you money for it. Well, the thing is, here's what you do. Before the gun buyback, you start going around shooting people with these guns and just leave them at a crime scene. And then you bring them all in and they're like, oh, these are real deadly. (laughs) Can we just buy a bunch of like kids' plastic guns and like spray paint them black? (laughs) I mean, there are some pretty primitive guns you can make. I, I don't know. But yeah, that's insane that they actually paid that guy off. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, good for him for thinking of it. But I believe it. Our government pays for a lot of stupid stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. Anything more on that one? Yeah, that's about it. 
Uh, today I actually had um, like people knock on the door trying to get me to like vote for their candidate or whatever and gave me a little pamphlet. But they knew my name, so I'm like, where did they find my information? Voter re- voter registration. But they would give they give people like that access to that. I wouldn't be surprised at all because they're like, yeah, let's make this legal because it benefits us. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> um, let's see what I got here. Okay, the all-seeing electric eye. Churches monitor adherents' porn consumption with spyware. Uh, Ever feel like the eye of the Almighty is watching your every move? You may be more correct than you realize. But who's watching may not be God himself, just your church officials. Some churches have recently been busted monitoring their members' internet use. They do it by getting you to install spyware on your devices, also known as shameware. These apps do pretty much what any spyware apps do. They allow the church to monitor what you do on your phone, tablet, or computer. And Lord help you if they catch you sinning. You can bet there'll be a stern talking to at the next church meeting if you don't get an email with incriminating screenshots right away. Uh, Seems even God needs a bit of help from morally questionable technology. Uh, One of the churches using shameware is Grace Point, an evangelical Southern Baptist church. Their spying habits were recently revealed in a Wired uh, report. The app Grace Point used is called Covenant Eyes. It part, uh, it's part of the wider industry of accountability apps, some of which have perfectly legit uses. This software category includes, for example, parental monitoring apps that allow parents to check and restrict uh, what websites their children are using. While some claim that such apps are a violation of children's rights, it's hard to deny that there are websites you don't want your kids to see. But the question of personal rights becomes more pronounced uh, with church-sanctioned shameware. After all, adults should be able to view whatever they want on the web within legal limits, of course. Grace Point doesn't agree, though. The church wants to keep its adherents away from sin, even by spying and blackmail. Covenant Eyes is primarily marketed as an anti-pornography app. According to its developer, the app is smart enough to understand if uh, the two mounds on the screen are breasts or something else. If it detects porn, the app sends a notification to the host. They can then bring the matter up with the offending worshipper. The problem is that Covenant Eyes monitors much more than porn usage. Wired tests revealed that it reports your Amazon shopping habits, social media use, and read articles, among other things. Uh, one person who fell victim to Covenant Eyes is Hao Wei Lin. Uh, when he admitted his homosexuality to Grace Point Church leaders, uh, he expected to be kicked out. Only that didn't happen. The church leader said God still loved Lin and would help him in his struggle with his same-sex attraction. And that help came in the form of Covenant Eyes. Lin installed the app on his phone at the church leader's request. Within a month, he began receiving probing and uh, accusatory emails from the church. The messages asked if Lin had anything he'd like to tell the church leader. Uh, Attached to them were reports of everything Lin had browsed on the internet. The screenshots and logs included web searches, (laughs) Amazon shopping receipts, and things that Lin had looked at uh, for a second and then completely forgot about. Lynn has since left Grace Point. However, in his own words, his, uh, he's still trying to get over the trauma of the constant monitoring. Uh, in a small relief, uh, at least there's some action being taken against shameware apps. Wired shared its report with Google, and the company didn't like what it uh, saw. As a result, Covenant Eyes and, and another monitoring app, Accountable to You, have been pulled from the Android Play Store. According to Google, they violated its content policies. But will Grace Point and other similarly nosy faith organizations soon find another monitoring solution? It's quite possible, considering their past behavior. Look, all we're saying is that one version of Grace Point's website had to clarify that the church is totally not a cult. Quote, quote, cults teach strange things, then try to control your life and forbid you to leave. The archive version of the site reads, uh, because monitoring your members' internet use 24-7 is absolutely not an attempt to control their lives. I mean, this is insane to me. Like, first of all, who would agree to this? And then, like, if you knew that was on your shit and, like, you were like, man, I really got to watch some porn, wouldn't you just, like, get another device that didn't have the shameware on it? Yeah. Well, what if that's like your thing? 
<laughs> like, <laughs> like you want to share it with <laughs> like now you're getting off on the fact that yeah. right like like you upload a, a video of yourself like jerking off a dog and be like then you watch it and like now they're gonna watch it <laughs> <laughs> i just i just got 20 followers <laughs> <laughs> now they're addicted to it <laughs> and you 100 percent know that they were watching like the gay business that this guy was watching and they were like oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I thought they might have been into the gay stuff. By the way, do who who accounts for these church leaders? Do they put this shit on their fucking shit so that everybody can see it? I doubt it. Right. It seems like it'd be like, okay, now here's the collection plate. I'm gonna give my sermon in about five minutes. <laughs> Man, they're gonna get to the point where they have people like watching the videos live. They're like calling you while you're masturbating. <laughs> 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 They can like see you through your camera, yeah. sweating. <laughs> Get off your haunches! I see you. Yeah, <laughs> we see you. You need to stop. <laughs> You're not gonna believe how many hail marys this is gonna take. <laughs> yeah. Insanity, though. Yeah. Can you imagine being so into this religion that you let these fuckers can, like? Yeah, I, watch you twenty four seven. When you started out with the story, I thought maybe they were like tricking people into downloading the spyware, <laughs> but like they're just straight up like, yeah, we're gonna watch you download this so we can do that. <laughs> Although you know, if it was a family situation, I could totally see like the religious wife being like, oh, yeah. oh this is a good idea. Oh, yeah. yeah, I want to know. <laughs> and the guy's I, just like, yeah, yeah. The guy has to go along with it. It's like. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's for the children. <laughs> like, months later, you find out about a second family and everything else that he's doing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just can't, can't imagine. But, man, people, religious people get so zany. I, I don't even want to be involved in other people's lives like that. I don't want to know about what they're doing or anything like that. The fact that this religion like wants to be involved and like that's the other thing. Is there is there nothing in the Bible about like fucking not minding your business yeah. and like spying on them? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you're not supposed to judge and shit. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big Brother is judging you, <laughs> watching you, and judging you yeah. like a motherfucker. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, indeed. <laughs> I like people to be like limited to whatever I share on Twitter. <laughs> Does this look like herpes? Uh, I think this prostitute gave me herpes. <laughs> Never fuck a dude prostitute. Well, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought that went over. <laughs> Well, guys, we just talked about sin. Should we talk about the devil? Let's do it. Of course, referencing She-Hulk episode. This must be episode eight, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> if only I wrote it down with extensive, <laughs> extensive notes. There it I, is. I, yes, episode eight. <laughs> every week we say this, but uh, I, this has been my favorite episode so far. <laughs> no. no no i will say i i didn't hate it i didn't hate parts of it you know to get to the daredevil thing like you know i was worried they were gonna do him dirty i wouldn't say well he was a, a dirty he devil this dirty. <laughs> but um i wouldn't say they done him dirty but at the same time like i do not want the tone he had in this episode to be the tone of the daredevil show yeah and I'm not expect. I'm hoping that's not yeah. the case. I don't expect that to be the case. Just to, I Th think it this was, was just she like Devil a yeah. or She Hulk, you know, influence on that character. I think I'd almost be surprised if they ever see each other. again. <laughs> it was like, oh, we want to have Daredevil in here. Well, yeah, because he's in. New I, York. I feel like that came from like the Disney like corporation, and then they they like wrote him into this episode. I don't. know. I feel like because of the lawyer connection you, you i feel like bad. she will show up in an episode of daredevil mm. with some sort of legal drama bullshit you know should we get into it gang let's do it uh so episode eight entitled a ribbit and rip it ribbit 
So I was wrong. I thought they would call it She Devil, which yeah, so would have been the better time. <laughs> what was the rivet? Oh, that what was uh, the rivet. That oh. frog guy. We're going oh, yeah, 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 yeah. to start the off. Right, we're going to start right off with it. So my two, memory's a little hazy. Two thieves are stopped by a guy named Leapfrog, who, for whatever reason, introduces himself as Guard Frog. Uh, he takes a cheap shot at the thieves and tries to fly away with rocket boots. But his suit catches fire, causing him to get third-degree burns on his legs. And basically, he's telling all this uh, to Jen. He's trying to get her legal help um, to sue the manufacturer of the suit, uh, which also happens to be her tailor, uh, Luke Jacobson. (laughs) Uh, I got something to say about this, but I think I'll wait because it'll come up a little bit later. Um, so Jen tries to like, first get out of the case because she has a conflict of interest. Like again. This is, again. Yeah, they use this already. Uh, and um, basically, like, her boss is like, oh, this leapfrog guy, his dad's a wealthy client of the law firm, and he's willing to sign a conflict waiver again so that you can try the case. Now, obviously, I don't know nothing about the law and these conflict waivers, <laughs> but my thing is, is there is there no conflict too severe that a judge would be like, no, I don't fucking care about a waiver. Like, this is obviously such a conflict that I won't allow it. Well, wouldn't also, like, the tailor be have some say in this? It'd be like... Hey, this is a conflict. We're 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 you know <laughs> right. we're together. <laughs> right. Also, what kind of client are you that you want the lawyer who's friends with the guy you're going after to be your representation? Like, I would feel like I wouldn't be able to fully prosecute that person, right? Because my lawyer is friends with that dude. Right, yeah, and weird. it seems like if you told Leapfrog's like rich father that, he'd be like, "Oh, yeah, maybe that's not a good idea." Yeah, you know. So yeah, just nonsense yeah there's some pieces that don't fit here yeah at least not yet that definitely did not make uh any sense um so jen goes to luke and basically tries to get him to settle out of court but he refuses i think he calls her like a greasy buffalo or something Mm -hmm. (laughs) and uh so he gets mad and drops her as a client he like the suit he's making for her gala he just like rips it off the mannequin and like she's but she he, he doesn't prepared. drop Leapfrog as a, a client. I, I mean, I mean, we would assume think he, had, he did because like Leapfrog suing him and stuff. Weren't they whatever. together later in the show? <laughs> he was kidnapped. Yeah, he was kidnapped by Leapfrog. Oh, he was kidnapped. <laughs> did, how drunk how are you? Yeah, how much whiskey did you drink? While... <laughs> I, I can't say I was so invested. I was paying super attention. <laughs> Maybe I should have reviewed the. Uh, the plot. You should do what I do. Watch a movie a thousand times. I can't watch this a thousand times. I watched times. John Wick again, by the way, this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I love that shit. I didn't like John Wick enough to watch it a second time. I watched two and three. <laughs> I didn't even try the other ones. I, I'm afraid if he's still going to be in shape for four, though, because he's getting up there in age. Yeah. Oh, he. they can hide it. I believe in Keanu. Yeah, I'm still going to watch it. <laughs> um, so the court case instantly starts because, of course, in this show, there's no realistic uh, time frames with the way the court system works. And um, we find out that Luke is going to be represented by bum, 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 Matt Murdock. Mm. Um, so basically, Jen wants Luke to produce his client list so that she can... Uh, maybe get other people that got defective suits, you know, to build a better case against him. But Matt argues that it would violate the privacy and safety of um, Luke's clients because they're all superheroes and it could put them or the ones they love at risk. Yeah, I thought this was very obvious. And I thought if Jen was a decent person, she wouldn't try to expose all those people. That is another thing, like... I mean, I guess you can say, oh, she's a lawyer, so, like, she's, like, doing the duty she, like, swore to do as a lawyer or whatever. But, yeah, like, there's another conflict right yeah. there. Is You wouldn't think she would, you know, be, be up okay for doing that. that. Yeah. Of course, I guess you could say, oh, maybe she was feeling pressured by the law firm or mm-hmm. whatever, you know. Um, <laughs> Okay. 
So Matt smells that Leapfrog used jet fuel in his boosters, his his boosters, which he says violates the instructions that came with the suit, and basically that instantly like has makes the judge dismiss the case. So so Luke wins. Now here's what I find funny about this is like in this world they are perfectly okay with this guy making suits that have like. <laughs> flying capability, like dangerous flying capabilities that could like really hurt somebody. Now, yeah, it, it seems like if you can uh, make rocket boots, like you have an entirely different business on your hands. <laughs> yes. But just think about that. Like, even if he didn't use the jet fuel and he just used the prescribed fuel, he it's a very dangerous activity <laughs> to fly using rocket boots. Like, the chances of you getting hurt are almost certain. <laughs> yeah, and the way he used them, he wasn't, like, leapfrogging to a building or something. He was going straight up. Well, luckily, he was only, like, two stories high when he, when he crashed. Yeah, and these don't seem like, you know, Iron Man, where you can, like, adjust the pressure and, like, slowly, like, yeah. go down, you know. It just seems like you're, like, boom, and you're, you know, in the air, and then, like, how do you come back down? Exactly. You know? So, like, the fact that this guy can even legally sell this costume seems ridiculous to me. <laughs> They're like, he told you not to use rocket fuel. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, the other thing was, is like, um, Matt, he was just like, what's that sm smell? What did you use for your booster? And he basically just confesses to using right. the jet fuel. So. He's like, yeah, jet fuel, son. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Jen tries to get Luke to be her tailor again, but he says he now hates her. <laughs> um, so now Jen goes to the bar. Matt buys Jen a drink as a peace offering. Uh, now I did kind of, kind of like this line. Uh, Matt says to Jen, Jen, he says, Jen can help people when society fails them and she Hulk can help them when the law fails them, uh, which I guess would be kind of his, yeah, you know, mantra. vision of what he does as well. Um, so I did like that line. I mm -hmm. thought that was a good line. Yeah, that reminded me of the the actual Daredevil show. It it was in line with what he would like believe. Right. Then. Yeah. yeah. So I did like that. Um. So um, Matt gets like a, a text or a call or something. It says he has to go. Um, and then Todd texts Jen. So Todd's coming back into the picture. Mm. Uh, Todd texts Jen. I think you got to be right, or they wouldn't keep bringing him back. Yeah. Like, he's got to be affiliated with the bad guys. So. Um, he texts Jen. What were they called again? The website guys? Intelligentsia. 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 Um, so, yeah, Todd texts Jen and wants to meet. Uh, they go to this restaurant. He talks about he how he bought a Wakandan war spear at an auction for a million dollars. One million <laughs> he's, dollars. And he's, re like, really trying to impress J mm. Jen with the fact that he's got money. So... Apparently, the Wakandans want the spear back because they say it was uh, stolen by colonizers back in the day. Um, yeah, they kind of make this guy to be out like a, a wigger or something. <laughs> like he wants to be black. I don't know. I thought he was just some like entitled douchebag. Yeah, I got more of like, yeah, like this entitled guy that's like, you know, thinks he's something because he's buying all this. Yeah. And he did. He did have a line though where he's like, "I'm the like foremost like collector of African cultural oh, right. items or something." That was really uh, yeah, yeah yeah. And he was like Wakanda forever. <laughs> oh, oh yeah right. yeah uh, yeah. That was Wiggerish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so then Todd kind of blatantly hits on She Hulk, and she's like, Ugh, and she like shoves a table over at him, causing like wine to spill on him. Uh, so Jen barely gets home when, and she's instantly called by Leapfrog. Uh, he calls Jen. He he's all like freaking out. He's driving his car really fast, and we know we can tell that there's like somebody on the roof, like breaking his window and trying to get to him. So he's like freaking out, and he's like just telling her like, "Oh, they're after me," and um, somehow she figures out like where he is. And she's like, oh, I'll oh, meet you. She, he put on um, find, find My Friends. On oh. His phone. He, like, shared his location. With oh, okay. 
and she's like, I can be there too sweet or something. <laughs> I don't know. And we see that uh, really quick, her hand goes in her closet, and we get that she's taken that suit that Luke made for her that we haven't seen yet. Which is basically the spandex that Hulk recommended. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so Hulk, uh, She-Hulk, like, and I mean, this is another logic thing where she's just like, she gets to this guy's car, you know, right away where he is. Like, he basically would have had to have been a block away from her for this to work out. Yeah. I mean, I would have cut to that too. I, I don't give a shit about her jumping around or taking a cab or anything. So, um, but anyway, she gets there. Um, she basically stops his car with her body and Daredevil flies off the roof in the big reveal that it is Daredevil. He was the one on Leapfrog's car. Um, so basically, I think Jen tells like um, Leapfrog, you know, get out of here. I'll deal with this guy. So Jen and Daredevil immediately start to fight each other. Um, Jen like causes so much money damage. Like she fucking wrecks this car. That's park. what Hulks do. I guess. Yeah, she picked up some expensive ass cars and threw them. Yeah, yeah. She was picking <laughs> up that one. I was like, that's a uh, that's that's somebody paid a lot of money for that. Yeah, she picked up like it was a rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, like Hulk before he was smart Hulk, and he was just like monster Hulk. Like it, it makes sense that he's like smashing him, like really making a mess of things. She's still got her intelligence, so she should not be that bad at doing this, you know. <laughs> Um, um, so, and then I wrote, she, uh, throws a car at Daredevil, which could have easily killed him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like he's not super powered. Like if she hit him with that car, he would be fucking dead. He's the devil. He'd be dead devil. <laughs> he's, you're devilish. <laughs> um, so she grabs Daredevil and takes his mask off, discovers that he's Matt. Um, uh, Daredevil says that Leapfrog is a bad guy. He kidnapped Luke and is holding him as ho- a hostage. Um, so yeah, now we go to his uh, what is the li- lily pad, like his his place or whatever. And Leapfrog is forcing Luke to make him a new suit. Mm, yeah. Okay. He's got some henchmen around. Right. And stuff. Oh yeah, and. Uh, Daredevil has this conversation where he's like, Hench- there's a difference between henchmen and goons. Henchmen are true believers, and goons just do it for the money. Mm. So he's saying that these guys are goons. Mm. Um, so basically, like, Daredevil like tells Jen that, like, oh, there's this many guys in the building. I can tell because I have really good hearing, and I can hear their heartbeats. And basically, he's like, you stay here. I'm going to go stealth all these guys. And you can tell, like, she just wants to go in there with her powers and, like, beat them all. Uh, but he's like, no, follow my lead. Um, I wrote, Daredevil beats up some goons that are using crossbows for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Daredevil never gets an opponent with a gun, does he? <laughs> they always have swords or something like that. <laughs> I mean, really, why would these guys be using crossbows? That was so stupid. Anything but a gun. <laughs> It's stealthy. <laughs> it looks cool. <laughs> uh, more bad guys come. They're about to fight Daredevil, but then Jen crashes through the roof and just basically like instantly smashes these guys. Yeah, was that just like a big them. chunk of roof that just like smashed them? I guess yeah. so. so yeah. They're, they're probably yeah, they're dead. probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> Daredevil, like, I was, now make a spaghetti. <laughs> I was like, he didn't make a big deal out of that either, because you would think he would make a big deal. <laughs> yeah, out he's of like, it. well, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> he's like, I think I can hear a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're holding on. <laughs> he he hit a couple people. I was like, well, they they might be dead. <laughs> uh, so now Daredevil and She-Hulk beat up the rest of the goons. And then Leapfrog tries to get away by uh, jumping out the window. And he right, he did just, the Mr. Uh, Invincible. Oh, yeah, he just crashes the Mr. And Immortal. hurts himself. Just jumps out the window mm. and lands. Which, <laughs> Apparently very badly. Which, by the way, this whole episode, he had third-degree burns on his legs. He wouldn't be doing anything, yeah. would he? Yeah, he'd just be true. laying around. He'd just be like, laying around in pain. It hurts. Yeah, it's so stupid. Um, 
Luke forgives Jen and agrees to make her dress again. Um, so Jen and Matt have a discussion on the top of the uh, building. And, um, you know, Matt says, oh, maybe next time I'm in town, I can take you out. And Jen's like, or you could just come back to my place and pound me like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> so, that's what I remember her saying that. <laughs> no, I, I, I read between the lines. <laughs> like, it's been a while since I watched Daredevil. I... It seems like, like in those seasons, like there was some like he was almost kind of like monkish, like in his training, like stuff. Like did he did he didn't have any love interest, did he? Well, he kind of did. Uh, what's her name? Karen. Karen Page. Yeah, she's okay. on the show. He kind of yeah, liked her. That. And uh, did she die? Others. He no, lost she interest. Lived. She lived. He lost interest. Yeah, I think she kind of got a relationship with Froggy later or something. I'm not sure. I don't. It's been too long since I watched it. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think they, I don't think they ever like really cuz he became a couple or anything. He had his old mentor. Was it did he die or was he alive? Oh, Stick? Stick, yeah. I thought yeah. he died. It's been too long since I watched yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I liked it, but I, it's been too long. I was just thinking he's going to go back to New York and this old guy's going to be like, I smell pussy on you. <laughs> <laughs> You've gone weak. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did fuck That guy um, seemed kind of like un- unkillable. Oh, a stick? Electra. Was In a- season two, he hooked up with elect- Electra. Man, I don't yeah. remember shit. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, I, don't re- I know I watched it. I don't remember that at all. At all. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she dropped pants pretty quick for this guy. <laughs> yeah, so her and Daredevil. Do I uh, smell a vagina tree rolling into town? <laughs> <laughs> They made a cum tree. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna make a cum tree reference, but I didn't know. <laughs> um, so they had this whole thing where, like, Matt at, in his Daredevil costume in the morning is doing the Walk of Shame, oh, yeah. which you wouldn't think he would go outside in the daylight as Daredevil, <laughs> right? Oh, no, well, you would think he would. He didn't just, have his other clothes. He just had to go barefoot. He could have just worn something she had at that point. Like, you don't wear your superhero outfit. (laughs) Yeah, it just didn't seem like She did have some manly suits. If he at all was concerned about his identity, he would not have walked out (laughs) in his fucking... But I I thought it was all for the humor, so I didn't really hold it against But see, that's the problem I have with this show sometimes, is they'll go for the humor even though it's stupid. I mean, I It doesn't make sense. I, I can let it go. Like, I feel like... The Daredevil show will fill in all the stuff about the character, and then, you know, we won't have to. <clears throat> I just don't think it's that big of a deal, but I get that some people do. So, yeah. You know, them hooking up though, like it makes me wonder, like, have they ever gotten together in the comics? It, it, they kind of make sense as a couple, just because you know they both have the same kind of gimmick, like lawyers by day, superheroes by night. It seems like you could do something with them in a relationship. The thing, never heard the thing it. is, I kind of felt like if they were going to do it, like they should have like. Not had anything happen because then you can have at least have the tension. That's true. Because there's like no tension. Next time they meet, they're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, we uh, we fucked last time we met." Mm. But <laughs> yeah, when she cameos in the Daredevil show, there'll be some sort of like reference to that. Uh, yeah. But by then, he'll have a new love interest. That's the thing. Yeah, because she won't be in like a normal part of his show, you know. So he'll have to find another love interest. Uh, so she Hulk goes to the gala. She's greeted by her perfect stranger's dad. <clears throat> um, Jen spots Todd talking to her boss. <clears throat> so I thought this was it, weird. Is Balky still alive? They should bring him in. He is. <laughs> they, they should bring him in. This is Larry Bartolicus, right? Is that it? Bartolicus. Oh, the uh, nice character name. Well, do, does, do they have the same last name on that show? I thought so. I, I think you know. they're cousins, right? Something yeah, they're like cousins. Because the one's Balky. Yeah, Balky. Balky and he's Larry. And I know Balky has that strange last name, uh-huh. but I didn't know if he did or not. Mm. No, I don't know. He probably does. I don't know. Um, so I thought this was weird. So we found out that last episode that Jen's up for that Lawyer of the Year award. Oh, yeah. But then they give it to Jen and like five other women, like oh, yeah. the Lawyer of the Year award. I was like, how is it Lawyer of the Year if they're giving it to like five, you know, six women or whatever? I don't know. That was weird. It was a uh, – <clears throat> yeah, we, we talked about it a little bit. She's had like two cases, <laughs> two half – two lukewarm cases. But, uh, yeah. But I guess it does play into that, you know, 
scene from last episode where she's like kind of resents the fact that like when she turns into she hulk she gets all this attention but when she's just herself she doesn't so mm-hmm. it's another thing of like she hulk getting this attention um so all the women like get to talk a little bit but during jen's speech she's interrupted by intelligentsia who basically take over the screen behind her and they start showing a sex tape of her and that josh guy that's another thing they're like oh she's only getting attention <clears throat> as she hulk but to be honest, it seems like she's getting boned every other day, so I don't know. I, I think she's doing all right. Although, you know. But she's only getting boned as She-Hulk. It's so sad. No, like, <laughs> like the Asian guy boned her as her, and That's then uh, Daredevil. Did he bone her as her? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She, he the did. real her. Okay. Yeah. Um... So she gets mad. She breaks the screen, which causes everyone to like panic and run out. And Jen sees like this group of men in masks and I guess assumes that they're part of intelligentsia, which I mean, how do we know these guys aren't just like, you know, guys scared of getting COVID? Right, yeah. <laughs> they could just be the catering crew who was right. like, we have to wear masks. Yeah, these poor guys. You know. <laughs> I was thinking today actually at work that like, it's starting to become a little sketchy again if you're like wearing a mask. Yeah. Be- because like I work right there and there's a bank and like people went in with masks and I was like, uh, these these are a little these guys are a little sketchy. Well, a lot of people took advantage of the whole mask thing and like committed crimes. Yeah. And now it just feels like they might be out there. <laughs> um. So Jen chases after one of these mask guys, grabs him, but then she's immediately a subdued by like police that almost like not only are they on the spot i guess they're security for this gala because of course like a lawyer industry gala like somebody's gonna try to fuck with so like my thing is like why were these guys on the scene there and like why are these guys dressed like they're some sort of like swat team like super soldiers or something yeah they all had lasers on her and stuff it was like a it was like a swat team and there's like there well there's hints that she's uh She's losing control of her uh, composure, I guess. I mean, yeah, like because before she broke the screen, like I think that Mallory lady was like, "Don't do it." Or, yeah. You know. But once again, this feels a little bit like a lecture because this is definitely like taking shots at like the uh, slut shaming people, you know, or at least mm-hmm. it seems like that, right? Like these intelligentsia guys are like, oh, she's a slut, and here's the proof or whatever. I'm, I'm starting to feel that way because she pretty much just fucks somebody every week. <laughs> slut shame. <laughs> <laughs> no, but again, it's like it just feels like we're being lectured to again yeah, on this show, bit. which we don't really need. But I need a lecture because she Hulk can do all the boning she wants, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> this show's making me sexist. <laughs> <laughs> it's turning me into the very thing they warned me against. <laughs> I know what's happening. You got a thing for green chicks, and you're just mad. <laughs> you haven't found green. one yet. <laughs> All the green ones are taken. I don't know. I think uh, Gamora looked good. <laughs> yeah, Gamora that's true. Look good. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, that is like on some sci-fi shows, like, there will be an alien chick that just looks like a human person in a different color. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> Even like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, like that first chick that's like on a ship or whatever. She's just like a regular chick with like, I think, like blue skin or like something. Purple or something? Yeah. 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 I think purple. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, I thought she looked cute. She looked fine to me. <laughs> she didn't look anything alien at all. You know, I do wish like human beings had like even more variety in skin yeah, color I do too. but do you think then it, we would be do you think we'd be even more tribal and stupid like oh my god the purple I, I skin the same and... yeah we probably i don't know <laughs> i mean you might have more options but we'd be the same <laughs> terrible yeah creatures. <laughs> I, yeah you just have like It'd probably be weird racism, <laughs> like a little different, yeah. like those off white people. <laughs> I do like the idea that like if a, a red skin and a blue skin hooked up, they'd have like a purple kid, yeah, <laughs> yeah. like color theory type shit. That's my favorite color, purple. <laughs> I mean, you, you can think about like people even like we'd be like, oh, they're black, and they'd be like, 
He's black. I'm brown. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> He's dark brown. Oh yeah, for sure. That would be the thing. They'd yeah. be like, I'm light pink. You're dark pink. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck those dark pinkies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'd find something. Some reason to be angry. Um. So yeah, I mean, this I think was one of the better episodes of She-Hulk. Yeah, I, I don't know it. if it was my favorite. It was all right. I, I mean, I kind of liked that they had a their little fight, and they both had like logical reasons for fighting. And then you know. It, it was it was a ironed out. positive portrayal of a man in this episode, you know, like that was also a good thing. We hadn't seen many good guys, you know, and Daredevil actually was somebody that, you know. Yeah, we know they can't turn him into an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they keep coming back to Todd. Do you, do you think he could be the main villain rather than just working for the villain? <laughs> this, this is what, like his third appearance? Yeah. Something like so, that. So, yeah, he's got to be part of it. I mean, he's got the money to buy henchmen, so maybe... I but again, one episode left. They have to introduce who's behind it all and make it satisfying. Could do you think they could do that? Or something? Maybe it's Todd's own father who's like behind it. I don't know. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, the the only the only enemy they have left is the intelligentsia. Yeah. yeah. Look, I I wasn't too excited about that being the main enemy at the end of this episode, but. I mean, if that's the way they're gonna go with it, I I'm curious to see who's the leader of the intelligentsia. Like, who's in charge? What's going on? Why why are they doing this? I, don't I know. mean, is there anything from the comics this could be? I mean, uh, is is there another Hulk character that shows up who's been injected with Hulk blood at any point? I mean, you would think that's something that would happen because we know they have her blood. So you would think that's the end goal is they they would turn somebody into a Hulk, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that much about the Hulk universe, I guess. I don't either. Like, uh, I tried one series of Hulk comics that got, like, good buzz, and I still found it to be incredibly boring. Yeah. He's just a kind of one-dimensional character. Then again, this is She-Hulk, and I she might be actually a more interesting character. I was listening to an interview with Ed Norton who was talking about like when he did it and like his kind of take on it was like, you know, this is like a cursed creature basically, which I think is kind of an interesting take, you know, that like he's delved into the dark, you know, arts or whatever and and now he's cursed. So from that point of view of the Hulk, I think it's kind of an interesting take. You, you got to figure, like, it's, I mean, I don't know the history of it, but you figure they were probably just like, oh, let's make a Jekyll and Hyde type character, right? I mean, yeah, I could definitely see that. But mostly, I just feel like he's so one note and it's all about, like, anger and dealing with anger. And I, I think, like, the Hulk storylines actually dealt with that quite pretty well because he did have that, but he also transitioned and he did have, like, a story arc. So I, I think they dealt with that particular problem pretty well i just i don't know for me like the hulk's whole thing is like he's supposed to be really strong but he's always just like a test for other people to prove how strong they are (laughs) right (laughs) right can you beat the hulk yeah the only thing about this intelligentsia group is just i think we talked about this a little bit last episode but like if there are these you know you know shitheads that are supposed to be analogous to like you know, you know, shitty internet groups or whatever. Right, pretty much up to this point, they haven't been really anything but internet trolls. But they have succeeded in getting her blood. Or but whatever. I'm like, why? Why would they create a group just that, that singles her out? Also, like they would go after every female superhero. Well, how quickly they formed after like she ex- started to exist. That's the other thing too. Is yeah, like, like she hadn't done anything at that I, point. I mean. I, I don't know the timeline of the show and, like, how many months it's been since she actually turned into She-Hulk. But she's a relatively new yeah. superhero. And there's already this group dedicated to her destruction. We hate this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they could, like, if they had shown, like, a toxic male fan base for the Hulk, 
Like, and then, like, them seeing, like, oh, there's a female Hulk, and then they could be like, you know, well, that's bullshit. And then, oh, so these are, like, people that are, like, hardcore fans of the Hulk, yeah, and they're yeah. like, she's stealing his gimmick, this bitch. Yeah, I could see that happening with Thor, too. Like, where Jane Foster becomes Thor, and they're like, oh, this bitch. <laughs> well, you know, there are real-life people that had a problem, you know, a big problem with, like, her basically, you know, not only getting Thor's powers, but using the name Thor. Yeah, yeah. So it does seem like maybe this show is even a response to those people in a way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can see that. But again, it just seems a little luxury to me. Yeah. Well, do you think that one, like, nerdy guy beca- is going to become, like, the main villain just because he's like, I'm obsessed with her and she's fucking everybody except me? <laughs> he's like an incel <laughs> oh my god that would be like intelligence <laughs> that makes sense. that's an internet troll yeah. right there <laughs> you know i was also thinking like you know you guys talked last week about you know is it possible they could um take um the abomination guy and be like, oh, he kind of masterminded this whole thing and, like, turn him heel. And I'm, I'm thinking, like, you know, they they could do that. But then it's like, he went to such great lengths last episode to, like, kind of help her. Well, I'm, I mean, plus you, I mean, Wu would have to come out as, like, a horrible judge of character. That, too. Wong, but Wong Wu, <laughs> yeah, it starts with the W, has an O in it. Close. Wu has a U, yeah. W U. I thought, oh, I thought it was W O O. Woo! The Nature Boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's about fighting in the ring. And, uh, it's all coming together. But yeah, so I don't know. I just at this point I'm like, is there a twist that could actually be interesting? And like, I don't know. I just, I, I mean, could it be a fight with the intelligentsia where like, you know, the abomination comes out on her side. I feel like because it feels like Daredevil's gone already. Like he yeah, showed up. He's he's off. To he's New done. York. He's done. done. Yeah. I, I figure it's just got to be like, she finds out who's behind it all. They give the serum to somebody that hulks up. They have a fight. She wins. Yeah. Gosh. And I, I could see it being a Titania who's the one who hulks up. I mean, that's the other thing that... Uh, I, I feel like... Makes, all, it we, makes sense, but she's such a weak villain. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't have malice. I feel like we all had, already had the random wedding, and it's just going to be like... Oh, you thought there was going to be a big conclusion? Well, now we're having a funeral. Inconvenient, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> this is your finale. <laughs> that would be funny. She breaks the fourth wall. You thought we were going to do something interesting. <laughs> well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I fucked Daredevil and now I'm fucking you. <laughs> also, uh, nobody ever explains this, but... um. What happens if they shit in Hulk form? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, just... is it just <laughs> insane? <laughs> it's an environmental issue. You know what? If it's that class five cleanup, <laughs> if the last episode was just them exploring that, <laughs> and nothing else, yeah. I'd be like, you know what? This show turned around for. Yeah, me. <laughs> I'd be down to see what happens to that toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Rage shit. <laughs> she, she changes back to her form and she's just like all skinny. <laughs> all emaciated. <laughs> she lost like 20% of her body. <laughs> or she ate like an entire like pig while she's in Hulk form and then she looks like she's pregnant or something. Oh yeah, that could be the whole drunk thing too, like where she changes back and she's got like (laughs) just a whole pig inside. This was a mistake. Oh, you know, that's how she's going to beat like um, if it's Titania or whoever turns into Hulk, she's going to like force him to drink a bunch and then change and get like Alcohol poison, oh, like <laughs> the perfect murder. <laughs> Drink them under the table and then just like transform. <laughs> oh yeah! Instead of a real fight, she's like, "I challenge you to a drinking contest." <laughs> uh, 
I don't know how it's going to end, but my money is on on Yeah, it's it's completely... (laughs) Nothing is on or off the table. Like They got one episode to wow us and bring it home. If I if I had to guess, I would have thought we'd be like on episode six out of nine with the way the plot has right. Like, who's yeah, the, who's the most sexist superhero out there? Sexist uh, or supervillain? Probably uh, what's his name, Eros, because he can get women to sleep with him even though uh, they don't really want to. He just uses his like powers to get them to do that. Man, that's a nice power. <laughs> that's a good power. <laughs> Like, he can get anybody to, like, agree with him and, like, do whatever he wants, basically. I mean, most of the superheroes on the boys are pieces of shit, so probably somebody. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Bringing home Lander. <laughs> Getting a hand job from, like, a... a <laughs> Burned up oh, a storm front. Right. She's, like, missing her legs in one arm. He's like, you can still give a hand job. <laughs> uh, That's a great boys. fucking show, though. I'm enjoying the boys. Yeah. yeah. Well, guys, we did make it over the hour mark. Should we wrap this bad boy up, or you guys got any other thoughts? Mm, Come tree. <laughs> I don't know. It's a pointless callback. <laughs> Instead of a Christmas tree, you put up a cum tree. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you just planted an entire orchard. What were they, plums or something? Pears. Pears. Uh, that's not like a good pear. <laughs> uh, who's eating pears off the cum tree? Yeah. <laughs> These pears taste like cum. Yeah. <laughs> they smell like cum, but they taste really good. <laughs> Trust me. Mm. All right. Well, if you live anywhere near a cum tree and can verify what they smell like to us, <laughs> please let us know in the comments below. Uh, but speaking of that, uh, please, 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 uh, if you will, um, Go ahead and subscribe both on the YouTube uh, channel and uh, in audio form on your podcast service of choice. Leave us comments. We appreciate those comments. Thumbs up, positive reviews, and uh, why not come over on on Twitter or whatever it will be after Elon Musk maybe buys it? <laughs> He's renewed his offer to buy it, right? Yeah, it's like... Something like that. He keeps going back and forth. I don't know. Well, after he found it that like a third of them are fake accounts, like he thought maybe his uh he was being a bit hasty. <laughs> but anyway, roll over oh, on over to Twitter, give us a follow, talk to us, talk to us, and you can find us at what handle? <laughs> at a name for this too, and that's the number two. At unsolicited S U G. And if you have a bunch of fake bot accounts, I will let you follow me. Yeah, I guess we shouldn't be picky, right? The bot accounts at least make us look good. Yeah, we'll take Uh, them. (laughs) Well, anytime I get followed by one of these like fake prostitute accounts, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll follow back. Me and you can be friends. And then they (laughs) instantly DM me, which it's nice having uh, some fake uh, relationship going. (laughs) It's like some FBI agent. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I do have an issue with a certain bot, though. Poop bot because oh, I've seen poop bot. Well, back in the day, poop bot like retweeted like you know one or two of our stories that oh yeah had poop had in it. Poop, yeah. And then I haven't heard from poop bot in ages, and we've had so many poop stories. <laughs> Maybe they cracked down on poop bot. Maybe they feel like we're spamming the the topic. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, poop bot, give us some love. Uh, and you can of course find me. At Zach Jones Live, that's Z-A-C-H-J-O-N-E-S-L-I-V-E. And that is going to do it for all of our shenanigans and poppycock this week. Please, please, please tune in again next week. Bye, guys. Take care. Have a good one.